my computer. Yay. So hello, I'm here with Katie May. And uh, my name is Emily, and I own Rebel Incorporated. And I'm super stoked to talk with Katie May this morning, because she's been in my mastermind for the last year. And I wanted to chat with her and get her authentic perspective on like, what she loved, what she didn't love, how the experience was. So hi, Katie. Hi. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about what you do and what sparked you to join the mastermind. Okay, what I do, it's funny, I'm still trying to figure that out in so many ways. <laughs> um, I am a priestess. I'm here for the healing um, of, I'm here for the healing of our sexuality and of our like souls and um i'm here to to bring us back into our bodies and to celebrate the human experience in all of its seasons and cycles um yeah and to bring us back in touch with our sacred nature mm -hmm through body, mind, and spirit. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was about this time a year ago when we were talking about the masterminds, what had you be like, all right, that's it, Emily, let's do this. Um, it was a few things. I love that you specialize in um, helping healers to build their businesses there was something about that that resonated with me more than um a lot of like just kind of like standard business coaching um there was something about being in a group of people who are all working on um bringing our healing arts into the world and trying to figure mm -hmm. out what that looks like in a in a world that hasn't really prioritized that in the in an economic sense. Um, it has been something that especially people in like female bodies have like always kind of done unpaid on the side while we also figure out how to, how to hustle. And, and uh, I'm over that <laughs> and so for you. And um, there was something about that that really resonated for me, so. Mm. Yeah, and there was also um, like a knowing, a knowing that I needed to put a little bit of structure around my woo. Mm -hmm. I needed to, um, I needed to, and still need to bring a little bit of my own masculine into into my efforts to contribute to the rise of the divine feminine. Like I knew I needed to bring a little bit of my masculine into that. And that was something that you were celebrating and offering. So. Awesome. Yeah. I, I was just I was thinking just about when you first signed up and you going to the bank to set up your bank account. <sighs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I got so mad because <sighs> they didn't approve because I tried to be honest about wanting to like have cannabis ceremonies. And I didn't even leave, I didn't even include the sexual healing in that. Cause I knew that that would be too edgy, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> um, but just even just saying that I wanted to incorporate certain medicines into my work. Um, I got shut down and, oh, I was so mad. <laughs> and then I went to a different credit union and just didn't tell them my full plans. And it was fine. And it's fine. And I'm not officially charging for cannabis ceremonies yet anyway. So I'm, it's, it's all above board. <laughs> and I think that's that was kind of a constant theme for me too, of like, how do we work with the system and like use the anger as passion and fuel to like do the damn thing, you know? Yeah, <sighs> yeah because I just like so often just want to burn it all down. <laughs> uh huh. Um, but then also, like, it's a pretty well established system. It's going to take a while to burn. It's already burning. But, like, 
to really see it through from from these individual sparks into like a pile of nutrient dense ashes like these things take time nutrient dense ashes i love that <laughs> willow come here <laughs> so what did you love what was kind of the journey that you've gone through what like felt sticky and frustrating to you know tell people like it's not all sunshine and roses mm -hmm. <laughs> um i loved the space holding i loved that every week i could show up to the mastermind call and there were a lot of times that i showed up like in tears like <laughs> screaming down my face and just like so angry and so frustrated and that space was held and then like two weeks later i would show up with like celebrations and i'm here to brag about all kinds of things and that was equally welcome um mm. so the space holding was a really big gift for me um and also just like being in a group with other healers, seeing how the stuff that we're dealing with is so similar. I like to pretend that my problems are like the worst, especially working in sexuality and getting censored and like not being able to use the words I want to use. Um, I like to, to turn that into like, woe is me sometimes. Um, uh, but I, I got to see that even though we all have our own individual challenges, depending on our niches and what kind of magic we're bringing into the world that like we also all are dealing with the same stuff, which is a lot of mindset work around like releasing and healing like sister wounds and the witch wound and um, just our fear around showing up and being seen because I know a lot of people tell me that it seems like social media is easy for me and it seems like I share so much but um it's actually really challenging for me and I often feel blocked and um and I to see a bunch of other really incredible women also going through the same thing was like okay I'm not alone and sometimes there were these interesting mirrors of like why is she doubting herself like, can't you see how brilliant you are? And then kind of knowing that that was there for me too. Um, and then it was triggery too sometimes. Um, sometimes for me, um, I have these stories about how other people have an easier time with social media than I do. Um, I have stories about like, especially sexual, like specializing in sexuality being like, more challenging than anyone else <laughs> totally <laughs> which i like no isn't true but my brain loves to make it true um partially as an excuse and partially in response to the things i deal with mm -hmm. um yeah and there were times i there were times like it, it is really challenging building a business um and let's see <laughs> there are times that like i wanted to make somebody wrong for that and it was usually me i'm not posting enough i'm not doing enough i like emily told me this thing to do and i didn't do it and so there's a lot of ways that i've been able to like make myself wrong for how long it's taking um so i mostly made myself wrong for that sometimes i made you wrong for that <laughs> um, i i almost posted the other day like if you're not pissed at your coach every now and then like they're not coaching you well enough <laughs> you know yeah, that's fair yeah and I, <laughs> I know my apprentice gets pissed at me sometimes because i'm like, uh <laughs> have you seen this thing um yeah so there were definitely times that i was frustrated and i actually like i have i'm getting better at being more structured around really keeping better track of like how much money is coming in and how much is going out i have most of my life just been like like i save up until i have enough to do the next thing i want to do and then i do that i haven't been um consistent at like keeping track of like how much I'm spending and how much is coming in. And so I don't know whether this is 
it's like factually true even, but it feels like um, the mastermind hasn't quite paid for itself yet. Mm -hmm. So I feel this like around that sometimes, especially right now thinking about re-upping like, like round one hasn't paid for itself yet. Um, And then I keep coming back to this. um, A a friend of mine has singing bowls, you know, where you like, and with a singing bowl, you have to like run the mallet around the edge for a while. And it feels like nothing's working, nothing's working, nothing's working. It's not even making a sound. And then you start to feel it. And then this like sound rings out. Mm. Sometimes, especially with like bigger bowls or like denser bowls, you have to be like circling that thing for a while before it really rings out. And um, I actually know in the depth of my being that I am, I am a bowl that puts out a frequency that is going to help to harmonize a lot in this world. Mm-hmm. And so I know that it makes sense to me that I got to go around the edge for a while before I can really like put out the vibration that I know is already in me. It's in the structure of who I am, just like it's in the structure of a bowl. Like it's always at that frequency. It just like (sighs) takes some time. And I feel like- That's beautiful. I'm in this space right now of like, okay, I've been doing it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I've been doing this thing for a while now, like, hello. Um, and it's usually like, just when I'm like, I don't, am I doing this wrong, but keep going that then it, that then it starts to, to work. And so I kind of feel like that's, I'm somewhere in there with, with my business. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in this place of like, like normally if I signed up for something and invested like a certain amount hoping to get a return on that and nine months later there was it was still not showing that I might be like you know especially I'm an Enneagram seven I'm always like uh, moving on to the next thing really quickly Mm -hmm. um yeah so there's a part of me that like wants to quit because it's all hard and like it feels expensive right now and then I get like pissed that it feels expensive because because it's yeah because I tell myself I should be making more by now. I think I think that's going to resonate with a lot of people because I had that thought so often still do sometimes right of like I should be further by now. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also like, holy shit, look how far you've come. Right. Right. I have throughout this time, like I was like reflecting last night and and a bit again this morning and throughout this time, I started an LLC and I started a website and I got some clarity around like prices. And I have some idea of like prices that I could and should be charging, even though it's still kind of hard. (laughs) to do that because yeah. I'm, I, I'm working through a lot of, yeah I'm working through a lot of money stuff and I just like want to hug everybody and I want to help everybody and and I got some work to do around like letting go of that and well, you've and- been helpful in that too about being like I'm I'm not available for that I hear myself being like I'm not available for this <laughs> and I, and I get that right. like I'm not available <laughs> like random dudes on the internet like no yeah. and and you're helping people so much through your content through your posts and I know you get the messages from people that are like oh my god I needed that yeah right yeah. and you have your Facebook group where they can get free content and what I love about wanting to help so many people for free is that when we do charge money for programs and services and like get consistent income, then we can help even more people for free because our yeah. needs are taken care of, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. And I feel myself being like right on the edge of that. Yeah. Like yeah. just so yeah, yeah. the sound where it starts <laughs> ringing. <up. laughs> and I really think business training is just like all the other trainings we've invested in, right? Like they're going to pay for themselves for the next 50 years, but it's seeing yeah. it that way. Right. Right. And like wanting to see it now, like, you know, I finally started keeping track of my income. Like I want to see You have it. income. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's also been a piece for me about like consistency. And I follow a couple of other business coaches like on social media, but not many. I've had to unfollow quite a few because most of them bug me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a lot of what I think bugs me is this like push for consistency. And I know you do that too. And sometimes I'm like, Meh. because, because for me, there's um, like one of the issues that I have with our current economic system is the like push for consistent growth mm. as opposed to like a real deep embracing of our cyclical nature. And so sometimes when I see consistency, I'm like, no, <laughs> I just get like mad. But then also I've actually sense. been thinking about this too and like allowing myself to reframe around like, I consistently want to write more and post more when I'm in my luteal phase. Hmm. And when I'm coming up to my ovulation, I have like more energy in my body and I'm more excited to be like out and like engaging with the world. I don't want to be in front of my computer. I don't want to be writing. I want to be out in nature. I want to be out with friends. I want to be making love. Like I don't want to be on the internet. Um, and, and it feels like, like up until very recently, and I'm still working through this kind of right now, but up until very recently, I kind of thought of consistency and like cyclical ways of being as being like kind of opposed or opposite. And I'm learning to give myself credit for the fact that I consistently show up in a cyclical way. That's um, brilliant and because, feminine. <laughs> yes, because there are times that I want to go two weeks without really being on social media. And I, and that's where I like want to make one of us wrong. Mm. Like I should be posting every day. I should be like recycling. And I actually like, there's so much that you have shared that I haven't done yet around like recycling <laughs> all posts and scheduling posts and like doing all the things that probably like should be easy. Um, there are times that I want to make one of us wrong for when I'm offline for a couple mm. weeks. Um, but I'm just circling around this bowl. And I, I sometimes, I often come back to like, I've told people this, that like my business coach says, I got to be consistent. And my business coach says, I got to like be on social media. I was like, but my business coach actually says that I get to build a business in a way that works for me. And that's like, I come back to that a lot. Um, I'm so that, glad. Like, there's all these things that I could do and I even want to should on myself sometimes, but like ultimately I don't have to do anything. I get to build this business the way I want. And it could probably be like, if I took every bit of advice you ever gave me, <laughs> it could be like, my problem right now would be like, not knowing what to do with all my money. <laughs> Good problem. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet because I don't always take your, all of your advice. But I think part of that goes back to like, like in going back to this metaphor of this like singing bowl, my frequency is what it is. And like, I feel like our bowls can like help harmonize each other. You got, you have your, you kind of, you have your frequency like out there. You've been, you've been circling <laughs> around it for a while longer than I have. Um, so I hear yours 
and I'm circling around mine and sometimes I'm frustrated that it's not the same frequency. Mm. Um, but then also like, I do come back to your reminders that like, I get to do this in the way that works for me and that helps. I love that. Yeah. Uh, you get to have your bowl, your frequency and your sound. And that is the exact right way to have your business. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, and it's okay. That it's, just like, <laughs> it's, it's the best. And yeah. it gets frustrating. Yeah. I'm trying sure. to learn. I'm really trying to learn to like, to enjoy the process. Enjoy and the I'm frustration. Also, yeah. I'm also doing yeah. a, 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 another coaching program with Carolyn Elliott. She wrote Existential oh, yeah. Inc. She's amazing. So she, yeah. She's like working with her is helping me to see where there's a part of me that actually like really gets off on this. And like, uh -huh. I love this struggle because I get to feel so self-righteous about capitalism and our economic systems and even social media. I like love to hate it. And then I like get jealous that you love it. And then like learning to like like just find even that like jealousy juicy mm. and I do find myself like knowing that someday I'll look back on this time in my life and long for like the simplicity of it back when nobody knew who I was <laughs> still like struggling to make my rent <laughs> totally 100% so, yeah just trying to like really like let myself enjoy the frustration. Like which, really get off on it, enjoy it and use it just like the yeah. anger, right? Yeah. Like we don't, we don't have to run from like the negative sticky things, but we get to amplify it and use it. Yes. Yeah. 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 What would you say <laughs> to somebody who's on the fence about joining the masterminds? Hmm. What is, I'm like, this is me because uh -huh. <laughs> so I would say to anyone on the fence and including myself that, um, that somewhere deep inside of yourself, you already know. And and the answers are in your body, in your womb, hmm. in like for the people with pussies, like your pussy knows. And so to take some time to like tune in to that. And trust your intuition and and to, to remember that there's always a good bit of resistance before the best things. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I think I just, I might've just talked myself into it. I think you might've too. I'm okay with that. <laughs> do it <laughs> there was a part of me that was like a little while ago and I was like oh nope you raised your price and I can't afford it so I'm out there was a part of me that was like okay good Phew, there was like some relief in that I think it's good to feel like feel yeah. fully through the yes and fully through the no yeah yeah and they both like feel good and then they both are like like I had finally been like, okay, I'm not doing it next round. And then we had our next call and I was like, I'm going to miss this so much. <laughs> yeah. So, but I already know, I think somehow, or it's going to actually, I don't know right now and that's okay too. And like, when I know like when it's obvious, I'll know. I love it. And this in between, like, uh, like, or can we enjoy the in between? Enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> the moment before the decision, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And then she's like, you know, this analogy of like my place, like all my walls are blank still. And there's so much like potential in that. And I have so much art that I want to have up on the walls, but there's this like, oh, but once it's up, it's I, decided. Won't, I won't get to wonder where it goes anymore. Mm. Um, so there's a little bit of that happening here. Of, and yeah, and just enjoying that in between and the not knowing. Whew. Ooh, I love it. You guys are getting to watch this in real time for those people watching. <laughs> I'm like sweating a little. I just, like, uh. it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else that people should know that are watching a Rebel Mastermind testimonial with Emily and Katie May? Mm. I think it feels complete actually there's nothing that's coming so Red. yeah thank you yeah you're welcome <laughs> thank you